look, let me tell you this. I probably won't let you know how it goes. <laughs> if Unless you've done it. You know how that goes, right? Because <laughs> people say, let me know if you did it and then I'll try it. No, I'm not. I even had some people on email out tell me that. And I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> and I get an email back, what? I said, I'm not, a, I'm not telling you. Put your money down and take the risk like me. Don't wait and let me take it. And you think if I take it and succeed, therefore it's safe for you. No, it's not. <laughs> Still not. <laughs> uh, anyway. I can tell you what you shared with that option contract to buy and sell property, tying it up. Yeah, That's a big thing. And if everybody's listening on the call, because there's fixing to be a gigantic wave foreclosures. You guys can get so rich. If you just look at this one thing, what is an options contract for real estate? You can get rich without even getting dirty. I mean, I make it sound easy. It's a little bit of work. Okay. But just with this knowledge, I mean, a piece of paper will get you the, the loan. It'll get you the, the resource. I mean, what's, what's, what are they doing? It's a foreclosure, right? On mortgages? They're setting mm -hmm. people up on mortgages, right? Uh, property tax and mortgages. See, like if, if people are flipping or like subject to, you know, like people wholesale, they okay. like I go to Atlanta Real Estate, like join the uh, Atlanta Real Estate Investors or wherever you are. So yeah. like you, you use a purchase and sale agreement. It, it's operates similar to, it's a private contract. The consideration is 10 bucks. I can tie up a house. I got 30 days to go find a buyer. And then I make the difference from what I'm contracted yeah. for and what I sell it for, for $10. <laughs> and, <you're> talking, yeah. <laughs> and it's called a purchase and sale agreement. So you have to learn these things because there's a wave coming. And then you can actually even possibly even help people with this knowledge you're learning here. If they're being assaulted improperly, you know, by the system or, uh, or flip the property and make money. And That's make, more useful than saying. storing food. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I mean, yeah, the advantage with the with the option contract from what you shared is then you have the option. They have to contact you whether they buy or sell. You have first right. That's one way to do with that. this for 30 days. But apparently your option contract lasts longer than 30 days. You can, you, know, you, can, you can renew it if, if okay. the seller will let you. If it's a really hot market and lots of people are coming to you and the sellers are going to say, hey, man, hey, come on. Come on. I want to sell this. You know, he's not going to renew your contract. In People are upside down bad too, way yeah. worse than 2008. And it's predatory. What is it? The numbers are worse than 2008? Well, I'll give you an example. Okay, so in 2008, I was at the meeting Monday. The average uh, amount people were upside down said it was $1,000 a month payments, you know, like you're eight, 10 months behind. Okay. But it was around 13 to 18,000. People are now sometimes 100 grand upside how, down. How are they getting this data from the debt service on public records? Yeah, well, they, that's what they do. They go, well, no, the people are calling in, they're talking to them. Oh, uh, yeah, they, okay. Pursuing, uh, okay. You know, they, they, uh, they contact them. You know, they got, you got these, uh, pre foreclosure lists. Yeah. That you right. can get. And, uh, man, you know, people, if they would just like, if you, if it were your, if it was your hobby to find these prospects and you spend an hour a week and for the, for the whole year up until, let's say, you started in January and let's say in October, you're looking for property like Ray's describing that's distressed or something going in foreclosure. Yeah, distressed, financially distressed property is what they call it. And let's say you just try to do it not even having a clue. You just took that sentence I just said and you looked it on the internet, <laughs> you know, and you, and you start looking around and maybe you spend a few dollars from software services or calling people. And So let's say an hour a week, two, three hours a week, let's say. And, and nothing happens until October. So you spent like 10 months doing it. And then you get that one deal like Ray's saying, and then you get the get it under contract and then you sell it and you make $50,000. For many people, that would be their entire year's salary. Now think about like this. You take that $50,000 and you guys know how to do this tax deferred, right? <laughs> Come on now. So you take that $50,000 and that becomes your next year's income, you've already earned it the previous year. You're already 14 months ahead of the game. Do that again. <laughs> really? It's not hard. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing to do. And then what you were touching on earlier, in my opinion, is the tort claims. 
because yeah, at some point, if you haven't gotten in a fight yet, you will. And you might as well pretend you're about to go into the hood and you better start taking boxing yeah. or karate or whatever. Bad, bad time, yeah. 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 If, you, you're, if you're going through life and you have a job and it's and you're comfortable and you're comfortable, this is the this is the measure of what I do. I'm I'm not I'm not a tough guy. I'm a sissy. But I don't want to be comfortable for too long. I have to say I will be comfortable, but not for too long. I'll be the first one to give shit away and go do something that's hard. I'm not going to get into what I do, but I do stuff that's hard. You guys think I'm nuts if I told you. You probably wouldn't listen to my calls anymore. But I don't want to be comfortable for too long. Anyways, that's all I'll say on that one. Ra raise so, so you only feel stable when everything's unstable? Uh, yeah. Not really. <laughs> I mean, I prefer to have comfort and peace and quiet. And I do have those periods of time, but not for too long. Because to me, that's death. That's death of my soul and my mind and my body eventually. It's true. It's quietness. Too much of it. So if you're not being, you know, you're not involved in lawsuits and arguing, arguing and having to send letters and being stressed out over money, uh, trying to make more money and trying to increase your net worth, you're, you're wasting your time. Life is not about that. You're not supposed to be like a fish in a pond, just like in one little place staying there. <laughs> you're supposed to climb mountains. You're supposed to mess with people. You're supposed to get out and do stuff. Somebody's whiteboard coming out. Somebody's doing, yeah, signing out. I don't know why. I don't know why that's coming up. But anyways, I got rid of it, I think. I don't know why that did that. that yeah, there's Ch Chuck said the right thing. We must be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's true. That hits it on the head. You really do. And, you know, I do it because, I mean, I like to do it. I feel, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Um. Anyways, uh. I, I have a regular habit of different aspects of my life where I do things that are, I make myself, it's difficult. I, physical exercise, but also in business and just my daily habits. Um, if you if you come over here and play me in uh, um, tennis, I play left-handed. I'm right-handed. Why do I play left-handed? Because it's hard <laughs> and I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I play left-handed. So anyways, just stupid stuff like that. But just consider that, okay? Uh, things are not supposed to be easy. If they are, you got to question them. What's this URL? G-I-Y-B. What's that? Who's promoting stuff? Come on, you guys. What is this? I'm not even going to okay. click on it. Don't click on the link, y'all. Guys, don't put stuff up here that's like, did Batman, did you put this here? What is this, man? Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know what that whiteboard was, but sorry if I don't know how to use the software completely. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there, so uh, let's see. I don't know about these rates. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. don't be complacent, but go, go look for some of the stuff that we're talking about. If you're watching the video for the first time or the recorded version of it, go look at some of these phrases, okay? And uh, sometimes I will, I will uh, chastise or reprimand people, Reynos. I will do that because I care about what your situation is. That sounds corny, but I really do care. And I will be the first to say, you're uh, wasting your time if you are. Um, and I want you to be, you know, angry sometimes. I have a client right now. I finally succeeded in getting him angry. Because the, and here's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of psychology to, to the, some of this stuff because he was in a mindset of a victim. Oh no, this is happening to me. And I finally got him to a point to be angry about it. Now, once he's angry, I can have him go along with me to be constructive. And sure enough, he called me the other day and he had a problem in, the, in a legal proceeding that I'm helping him with. And he told me how he just manhandled it. And it just worked perfectly. And like he got the result he wanted with the court, the judge's office in one hour. 
and they were fucking with him. And I didn't, he didn't have to call me and say, it. he just did it. And then he called me and said, yeah, I told him this. And, <laughs> and I got him angry. And so now he's going to be effective. It's like today I'm, I'm working out and uh, I'm exercising. And my attitude is <clears throat> I'm lifting more weights than I'm, than I can. I'm trying to lift more than I can. Sometimes I can only do two reps because it's too heavy. But next week I'm going to do four. And so my attitude is I'm going to be angry. I'm not angry at anything. I just have that energy, you know, being angry and it gets things done. So sometimes it takes that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look, so Jason's asking me, and I'm sure a lot of you are asking this question about how to get access to the options contract for real estate. <clears throat> I'm going to sell that to you guys. I just told you on this call how to do it for free. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'll do a whole I'll do a whole class on it and I'll show you how to do it for free and I'm going to charge you $1000 to show you how to do it for free. Okay. Ray, I'll split it with you. Okay. Let's get Plus Elaine on there too. I know she's eager to, she, she'll be good at it. We'll drink some beer. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. We're all, we're <laughs> tequila. On. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to make you experts at options contract. Me, Elaine, and Ray. <laughs> but it is something they should look into. I'm telling you, there is going to be a big foreclosure wave. You really should because you somebody need to study buying, up. somebody's buying the real estate in your neighborhood and you're not. And you, when you buy, you make money. When you buy, you make money. Even if you spend your own money, you're going to make money, especially real estate. There's all kinds of things and ways to make money with real estate. I mean, <clears> don't be <throat> dumb. Don't be paid too much. But I'm just saying, acquire the real estate somehow. And an options contract is magical. It's the money. What do you think Donald Trump does? Not that I'm saying, you know, he's the best ever, but I'm just saying, think about it. This guy makes castles in the sky and has other people pay for it. And he lives there. Literally towers of gold. He has gold fixtures in his house. Not to, not to, to be just be a, you know, a showboat, although he is. He has gold fixtures because there's no other place to put the gold. Why not put it in the castle that you just built that's 40 stories up, four floors or whatever, that someone else paid for that has better security than Vegas casinos? He has to build his toilet out of gold. And everybody makes fun of him for it. And he's laughing at you. <laughs> right? So what this guy would do in the 90s, and I'm just summarizing, you can read his book, The Art of the Deal, but he would just go and find an ugly lot that everyone was scared to buy because they didn't have vision. And he would go get the lot. How would he do it? An options contract. Donald Trump would use an options contract. I, I want the, an option to buy this lot, this ugly lot. It's never going to be worth anything, but ah, I'm stupid. I just want to buy it. Will you sell it to me? I'll give you $20,000 for the option to buy this in the next nine months. And then he'll call up people that he knows who from people that he knows, and he'll ask them, would you like to buy some high-end luxury commercial space in Manhattan from me? Yeah. And he would <laughs> I would have him wire a million, 10 million, 20, 30, 50, 100 million dollars. Yeah. And then he'll set up the deal. And then once the deal gets rolling, he'll finance his way out. Based on the deal that he created out of thin air with a co options contract. Now I'm not saying we have to do that. But why couldn't you do that for a couple of houses in your neighborhood in the next couple of years? Shoot. Another thing is there's all kind of money out there, private money. You don't have to use banks. I mean, when I go, when I go to the meeting like Monday, there's whole yeah. tables of people of these lenders sitting around and it's all private money. And they're looking for somewhere to somebody to something to do yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. My uh, part, I called my partner the other day. He was at the bank. I said, what are you doing? He goes, Oh, I got to wire some money. So he, here he told me about this transaction. He said, there's another, now my partner's a real estate investor in Atlanta, of all places. And he said his, uh, 
his other colleague he's working with, this guy is closing on a deal and he already has $100,000 cash into the deal, this real estate in Atlanta. And he needed another $30,000 for something. I don't know what it was, but my partner sent him the $30,000. He wired it to him because the next day the guy wired him back 32,500. He made $2,500 just because he could wire him 30 and sent and the next day he made it. What kind of return on capital is that? If you annualize that, your return on capital is going to be like, what, 800%? <laughs> you know? That's just from knowing people. <laughs> how do you know people? Here's, what, here's an interesting thing. Here's how you know people. Let's say if you want to get into real estate, you guys are like, oh, I don't know people like you do. How do you think I know people? Not that I always do it this way, but I go to a real estate office. If I'm new in town, go to a real estate office. Those people know everybody. If I'm new in town and I want to know people, I'm going to go to a real estate broker's office. I'm going to tell them I want to buy a shopping mall. I want to buy a house. I want to sell a house. I don't know. Tell them I'm new in town. I don't know shit. But I'll buy him lunch this Friday and next Friday, and I'll send a pizza party to his office. So that might cost me 400 bucks. But I'm going to talk his ear off. I'm going to get him to tell me everything. And then I'm going to set up a relationship with him, right? Because he can remember me. That's how you start knowing people in your town if you don't already. You should be doing that if you're over 40 years old. That should be a no-brainer for you. You should have fun with it. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, uh, Trump used bankruptcy to negotiate with the bankers. He's a smart guy. He, he wasn't bankrupt. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Sure. He, he's a smart guy. He used bankruptcy to negotiate. In fact, I'll give you one example. So think Trump, he's already a billionaire. I'm not, I'm not sure when he did this. Just one, one case scenario, right? So I, I, I'm just ad-libbing here. So imagine Trump's already a billionaire and, and he's got people doing all his work because he showed him how to do it. So he's sitting in his office in Trump Tower or whatever, and he's looking around going, this is boring. I'm going to find something interesting. I'm going to look through the bankruptcy records and I'm going to see who's out there struggling. And he did. He found a guy that's running something and he's getting his butt, butt kicked by the banks. So he bought a 51% interest in the guy's organization, okay? He took him out of bankruptcy. Now, he runs the show, right? 51% ownership in this company. Why did he buy the company? Probably because it had a good uh, base. It had a good uh, something, some potential there. There was something there, okay? He bought it. So now he steps in there with his attorneys and he starts negotiating with the banks who were his the guy's creditors, the guy's in bankruptcy. Trump gets him out of bankruptcy. Trump's saying to the banks, Here's the way it's going to play out, fellas. And he starts trying to, you know, basically tell the banks to get lost. You'll be lucky to get pennies on the dollar. And they didn't want to do that. They they wanted their whatever, their pound of flesh, in which they had every right to get. But Trump doesn't care about that. So he used bankruptcy court in that scenario to get rid of the banks. He said, look, you should have taken my first offer. Now I'm going to eat your lunch. And that's what he did. He did that several times. Oh, so anyways, I don't know if you guys are aware of the, how that, that plays out, but I'm going to have to get that book. I don't have it. The Art of the Deal is online for free. It's so, it's so old. Just go get it for free online. Right. If you like it, send Trump 10 bucks. Tell him you read his book for free online. He'll love it. He'll love it. He'll give, he'll give you know, sure pizza party this Friday, Batman. <laughs> We're going to meet you at your local uh, pizza hut. It's a bat cave. See you there. See you there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, okay, so you can learn about these option contracts. So it's just challenge contract. also be mature. And to, All right, guys. Like, like, yeah. Randy, I talking? Talking? are you talking? Who's talking? Oh, shit. Sorry. It's okay. I'm um, sorry. I would, look, if you if you guys will indulge for just a moment, I'm gonna do something crazy here. Just indulge me for just a moment. All right. All right. 
Let me see if I can do this. All right, so it remembers me. All right. Chat. Okay, you guys. You see that? I'm talking to the AI, right? I just said, hello. I said, hello, AI. It said, hello, how can I assist you today? I'd like to write a contract. Let's see, I'd like you to write me a contract so that I can purchase residential real estate as an option, or let's say at my option at a later time. Now, it's gonna come back with a standard type contract, okay? And you're gonna have to have a little you know, need a little reading, read through this, see if it, you have to just kind of see if it makes sense, okay? You got these sort, sorts of standard clauses in there, okay? You recognize those, you've seen those in contracts you sign, right? Here's the, here's the meat, the exercise of the option. The buyer must deliver a written notice to the seller before the expiration date the notice must be sent by certified mail return receipt. You see that? Right there. That's your options contract. The rest of it is just conditions on the exercise of that option. You see? Here's what I'm going to end up doing, right? Now, let's do this. Nice work, thank you, which is not necessary. I just like to have some fun. Can you add a provision that gives me, the buyer, the first right to refuse any offers on the property once this agreement is in place. And it updated the contract for me. Need I say more? There you go. Guys, come on. If you don't, if you can't use that, what I just showed you to make fifty thousand dollars this year, shame on you. It's all around you, and there's the tool right there. I mean, if you if you're not sure about the AI, go have the AI write up the contract. I didn't put the other clause in there deliberately. Uh, you have to figure that out. Have an attorney look it over. There's nothing wrong with that. Have an attorney revise it and then become your attorney and speak for you. Just tell them what to say. That's another way to use a lawyer. Don't just go to the lawyer and ask them to do stuff for you. Tell them what to do. If I'm gonna hire a lawyer, no problem, I'll do it. I'll pay him a thousand dollars because I'm gonna tell him, I want you to write a letter to the, to the seller and I want you to make an offer for me. And here's what the offer is. Here you go, I already wrote it for you. I just want it on your letterhead. That looks more respectable, doesn't it? You guys would get a lot more respect from the banks if you had a lawyer represent your company. I've said that before. I hate lawyers. But if you rely on their professional standing, you're going to get a lot further in what you're doing. Things will be easier for you.